Prince is in the background. We better pause that before we get demonetized. Oh, wait, we don't make any money from oh, this. Please. <laughs> no, it's all audio, so it's unlikely to have any endings on that. I am driving. And she's drunk. I'm not Free basing cocaine oh and goodness. heroin. Wow, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Let me turn the overhead light off. Yes, that'd be great. But yeah, we are leaving the Alamo Draft House at Sloan's Lake after watching... Dumba Money. The B is silent for most people, but not for my husband. Not for people who know what's going on. That's right. You know, we don't have any money. Our net worth is probably in the negative. And that's <laughs> fine by me because... Debit. Yeah. My goal is to die with a net positive so my kids don't inherit a debt because that's what's coming. Where your kids will inherit your debt. It's oh, yeah. not necessarily the case now, it's coming. but it will be. If they can make it a thing, they'll make it a thing. Yeah, exactly. And when we say they, we mean we mean pretty much all the rich assholes in power. I mean AOC and Mitch McConnell. Oh, my Lord. They're in the same boat because yep. they're in the same entity. It's those people. It's the Congress. It's also the hedge funds. And yeah. All of which are featured in this film we just saw. Yeah, the biggest takeaway, first off, is that the people with money won. They just did. They got their butts kicked, but they still won. Yeah, because they didn't get prosecuted. Yeah, they still won they and everything money. like that. Yeah. There won't be any change to that until there's no money. It's just the way it is. Yeah. It could be America could go the way of Iceland or someplace like that where it takes those people and holds them accountable. And you hold a few rich people accountable and make them really pay, all of a sudden, suddenly, they're like, hey, and they're paying out. Mm-hmm. It won't happen. I will die before, if it does happen, I will die before it happens. I will say that. However, another thing Dumb Money gave me was another appreciation for Paul Dano. Yes. Yeah. I won't see everything he's in because I won't see the Fleischmans or the Mebelins or the. Flibbelmans, whatever he was, where he's like Steven Spielberg's dad or something like that. Because I don't really like Steven Spielberg. No, you don't. And that just looked like a ego stroke and puff piece by Spielberg. I don't need that. But we're not talking about that movie. I will definitely see Paul Dano in The Batman, though. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Dumb Money. And for those... I remember when this went down. Um, oh, yeah. Same. So, it was, it was right at the end of 2020, but into the early part of 2021. But... I, I am on Reddit. I am not and have not been, though I hope to change this. I'm, I have not been part of the subreddit Wall Street Bets, but <laughs> I, I remember that my friends and I on Slack talked about this a lot. A, it was hitting the news, which we talk about that stuff anyway. But one of our friends, Vanita, I think she was a user of Robinhood. So she had, she was closely watching it and just, and how they figured into oh, the yeah. shittery <laughs> going on with hedge funds and trying to prevent regular people from making money but uh, yeah it was but it is kind of like a like hey the little guy had a moment you know and might still be having moments by actually tricking rich people out of money because some average dude who happens to follow stocks figured it out yeah so it's a it is a very david and goliath i think it was described that way and i think that's yeah it's kind of like that too, but it's about GameStop. It's about how GameStop was about to go under and a bunch of hedge funds, this Melvin guy. Yeah. No sympathy for rich people not really doing anything except for gambling against companies. Yes. If you gamble against a company, you are a piece of feces, in my opinion. Keep it keep it rated PG-13. Can't say fucking shit in here. Well, um, I think you already said it. <laughs> oh, this guy. Yeah, well, there, there you go. This piece of feces driving this Corolla again. He's not smart by him. <laughs> you know. Anyway, don't get me started. Well, we are dri- it's driving. It's a car ride home. So it is a car ride home. But, you know, you know, got cut. We literally almost got hit by a Corolla. So, I mean, <laughs> it was <laughs> pretty dang close. Okay. I don't have any sympathy for that. Gambling and not earning your own money and not doing something to make, you know, either yourself an asset for a company or a product or manufacturing is just wrong, in my opinion. Dude, this guy does not even know. Again, he's about, I think he's drunk. I don't know. 
45 on the highway. Go around. We gotta go around. We gotta get this anyway. Gotta get away. Get away. Run away. Seriously. Oh, he's on his phone. <laughs> ah. Seriously looking down at his passenger seat while Getting driving. Get onto a 70 mile Get back, an hour let's put his license way. plate number out there. Oh, Lord. Lord. Anyway. Wow. No, but your point, I really related to a lot of the, the movie. A, you oh, and yeah, I totally. both love GameStop, and they were talking about how rich people and the investors were just, well, no one's going to buy physical copies of anything. Couldn't understand. They're like, I guess they sell mouses, mice, and stuff. And you're like, dude. It's freaking COVID, and the gaming industry, hello, was going through, just went bonkers doing COVID, because everybody's like, I am at home, I am bored, I need to do something. Yeah, the gaming industry <sighs> endured tremendous amounts of profits during the pandemic stay-at-home because of games, and things like Animal Crossing for the Switch, yeah. and online games like Call of Duty, and all platforms saw... A tremendous boost yeah. in their bottom lines. Well, and then anybody, like even like the hardware, you know, like it was hard to find. You had all the supply shutdowns and everything like that too. We won't talk about that. Yeah, but, yeah. however, what we've seen lately this year in the gaming industry is a real move to digital, and people are saying, "Oh, yeah, digital is better for this and that." Now, um, I will say this: if it goes all digital, I'm out of gaming just out You're like they're very, not gonna get my money yeah. because one i like to have a physical piece of memorabilia because i have a giant wall with that junk on there it's a pack rat situation and you can't sell a digital code so you, there's no resale market that's where they're trying to get games they don't care about games they don't care about best buy or whatever and frankly neither do i you know gamestop is a publicly traded company who was run poorly for a decade before this happened yeah it was run poorly. Let's not bandy words here. This gave them a band-aid to like say, hey, we can actually do something better. And they might be doing that. They might be repositioning themselves to collectibles and the vintage market and things like that. But what Dumb Money showed me is nobody really cares about gaming or gamers. Yeah. They only care about money. Yeah, which was a big miss on their yeah. part. But yeah. So the movie is, I think it's really well done. Um, they do an excellent job of establishing. So you get who all the players are from the individuals who are the you know investors, kind of the normal folks. Right. Also with the the hedge fund leaders and who they were and how they all you know were related and tied together. I thought they did a masterful job. I was really impressed. I was not confused. I got what was happening. What, what led right. up to what led right. up to when the the stock kind of got more mainstream? Like, what is happening here? So I thought they did a really good job. Well, we're gonna kind of pivot on our little normal kind of talks that we do. I'm yeah. gonna ask you, what was your favorite moment in the game? In the game? Game. <laughs> <laughs> in the GameStop movie, in the Dumb Money. Ha! Woo! Guess who had a beer at the show? Mm-hmm. That would be me. I. Gosh, that's hard because we just saw it. And there were a lot. I liked a lot of things. I I think I liked... I liked... Okay. Because this was stuff I remember seeing. I liked... They, they pepper in some of these montages where they're showing you actual footage of what was CNN, going... CNN, Marketplace. TikTok. Uh, TikToks, YouTube, YouTube. Instagram. And also the Senate. Here. I'm, am I answering this? Yes. I'm just... Yes. That's right. Speeding things up. Okay. Well, but there's no speed... We're close up. Okay. Anyway, but yeah, that was my favorite because that, for anyone who was looking at any of that stuff, it totally threaded. I actually recognized on the screen, I'm like, I saw that TikTok. I saw that one. And, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my God. This And so it tied in for me, especially someone who was like, yeah, I was kind of watching this. I didn't really know how it resolved or if it resolved, but so that was my favorite part. What was your favorite part? I don't know. Uh... The Raging Kitties, I can't remember his name even. Roaring Kitty. Roaring Kitty's wife. Uh, Just being supportive and like yep. buying in. Yep. You know, that's a teamwork. Yeah. Like they both didn't know. They were both kind of in a situation where they could sell, make millions, and then like Wall Street could quote unquote win or whatever. They don't know. Yeah. I mean, it still might have gone on without them doing it. Who knows? Probably not. But 
staying together. That was my favorite part with their scenes together. Yeah. Talking about real situations where they would lose their house, possible jail time, lawsuits, like real consequences. And they're like, okay, let's just do this. We'll, yeah. we'll do it. And then the family stuff that around them. That's cool. Pete Davidson plays the Mark, brother. Mark and Kitty's brother. Yeah. And he's just funny. Maybe not his best. Well, he did. Because he's just Pete Davidson. He did a good announce of a anno- anno- balance of annoying brother, but right. also someone who was really important to the main character. Kind of just showing a part of society that is kind of dumb. You know, we're all dumb sometimes. Also, don't ever certain. order from him for DoorDash. Good lord, dude. <laughs> and also, don't order DoorDash. You can save yourself buttloads of money. Go yeah. give yourself a and learn how to cook. That is the best way to save money. Learn how to cook. If you cook five meals, guess what? That's five meals a week you can make without going out. Anyway, that's smart money. What was your least favorite part of the movie? Oh, least favorite. Hmm. <laughs> Besides the ride home, that Corolla guy is going to die. We're not talking about well, he's that. he's not guy. around us anymore, I hope. Thank God. I hope. One hopes. Least favorite part... No, I, I don't know if I had a least favorite part. I mean, I I didn't. I definitely didn't have a part I didn't like. Oh, okay. The, I thought the stupid part where they're at the at the party, they certainly could have done something other than hey, stick your hand my your hand down my pants for two minutes as a as a party that, joke. That may have been something that actually they happened, could have esta- but... yeah they could have established that relationship differently. But yeah. whatever, it was that was the one that was the only part I think. College frat sexual, but yeah, public sex pretty real to pretty real life. Yeah, sure. probably. My least favorite part was that Mr. Krabs didn't say "I love money" or "I like money." Yes, Clancy Brown. Is oh my a God! And Clancy movie. Brown and everything. Can we start a petition to have Sebastian Stan and Clancy Brown in everything? Oh my God! Oh. I love her, Sebastian Stan, and he's he plays the Robin know, Hood guy, a right? Robin Hood, and he, yeah. he kept trying to like doing the thing in meetings, to like deflect. where you're trying to like, "Hey, I need to keep you in check," and he kept putting his hand on his uh, partner's shoulder, like. I need you to stop talking. Then you're just like, hey, you're saying too much kind of thing. So he he was he did a good job of just exuding that. I'm rich and so I'm I'm leechy, you know, it's gross. It was yeah. It was good. Seriously, but that was my least favorite part that they did they had Mr. Krabs. <laughs> I like money. And they didn't say I like money. Like he could, totally could have just bought into that. Because everybody here oh my God. has seen Spongebob at least once. And the, the mom, the whole, like, when oh, they find out. Oh, sweet Lord. That's like, awesome. oh, my God, someone could kidnap the baby. And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> She's just so paranoid. Like, I thought that car was going to veer into us. I'm like, that is a well-written. I wonder how close that is to real life. But oh. No, it was hilarious. Yeah. Well done. So, hoping that the Gilman guy, whatever, the Roaring Kitty gets money from this movie for using his likeness and his story. Yeah. This might be a story that he sold for this movie. Yeah. And they probably made it for $1.85. It was in like four sets and then reusing public domain footage. It yeah. was awesome. Like, yeah. movies like this are fun. Now, could we have watched this at home? Sure. And been just as enthralled with it? Probably. But Alamo, this is, you know, looking for sponsorships. Their movie pass... We're like, yep, we can just do this one, and we're doing it. Because well, it gives us this time to ride home. Well, and for anyone who's listening to this who did see The Big Short... I was seeing the same thing. Yeah, I think this was better. It was more... Big Short did a really good job... But it was from the other side. Right, but what I'm saying is it talked also about investing in, you know, the bubble and stuff like that, yeah. the housing bubble. It still gets a little cerebral because, you know, that stuff is complicated, but I thought that movie did an excellent job of painting that picture... But, you know, there were times where, it, you know, all the all the wonderful ways it was made, I still like this movie better. I think the, the pacing and the, the, the you really cared about some of these characters more than you did in The Big Short, in my opinion. Truth. Um, and The Big Short was a guy doing a hedge fund like Melvin guy with, you know, a big gamble. Yeah. And it paid off on a short on mortgages. Many people lost their homes because of this. It was the big short was from the other side. You know what they didn't do, and I, they probably didn't have time to do it. Reddit got. Re, I think this was if I need to go back and research it, 
there was there was a huge controversy and shakedown for a long like about did they shut down some Reddit? Yeah, because they would shut because if they shut down Wall Street bets, and then I think there were and that's led to even just this last year during this last year twenty twenty three subreddit moder- moderators have been like you know revolting and they can you guys that's what I'm, yeah. I I think so interesting about this is. And, and it says at the end, I don't care about spoilers, you're going to see it anyway, but you can also look it up, but that now hedge funds do monitor those individual, what they would normally call dumb money, but individual, re- you know, what retailers are, you know, people Like are me putting in 500 bucks into something. Yeah, they're, they're monitoring that and they're monitoring Reddit because it really is, uh, that is a community forum. It's people. And you get people in there, they can, I loved that, that was a big part I liked is that the way that he was able to mobilize people just by catching on and then they became they were in it together yeah and i loved that part because that's i think what was also one of my favorite parts about not only did they talk about his own family and kind of how they all were tight-knit and even had like messiness but also every one of these individual investors who were like no i'm gonna if he's if he's if he st- sticks, I'm going to stick diamond hands. So that was cool. I liked it a lot. Yeah. So we're going to rate it now. All right. You know what you got? I don't yet. Do you have a rating? Uh, yes. I'm going to give it 10 out of 10 hang in there cat posters. Oh, 10 out of 10 hang in there. I thought it was really well done. I don't have any complaints. Hmm. I got a couple of things floating in my mind, but it's eight. It's a solid eight. Okay. Out of ten for eight. me, which is great. Eight equals great, right? It rhymes, <laughs> eight so is great. it works. Yeah. C's get degrees, and eight is great. Right. C's get degrees. In high school, D's get degrees. So, <laughs> stay in school, kids, but play your Minecraft if you want. But I'm gonna give it eight. Stolen French fries. Oh my god! Yeah. That dude just pissed me off so much. Anyway, Pete Davidson pissed me off. Pissed me off like in general because yeah. he's Pete Davidson. That's a, like <laughs> that's like his thing as he wants to do. But we're not quite home yet. But we're rating it. I want to ask you, yeah. what's your favorite thing you've seen or done in the last couple of weeks? Is it Loki season episodes one and two of season two, mm-hmm. or is it Starfield, mm-hmm. or some other third thing? Um, this is on the record. This is going for Congress one oh, day. Oh, oh, Reservation Dogs. Reservation Dogs was pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I, I think it, it kind of ended, not crescendoing. Yeah, but was satisfying. Like ah, it yeah. It wasn't the emotional cry fest that some of the other episodes have been, but especially coming together, it was real. It felt really good. It's the best thing for comma comedy. No, come on. I almost said comet and drama. Come on, come on, come on. For comedy and drama, Lort comma. since Mash. Dramedy, yes. And we just started watching Mash, see episodes one and two of season one today. But how about Starfield? Oh, Starfield's great. I I I, I can't play it all the time, obviously, because yeah. life. But no, I like it a lot. I feel like I'm never gonna hear get to, to the end of it, which is great. I'm actually on some kind of. I, I, I'm on a big kind of very extensive side quest or some rando <laughs> quest that's not part of the main story, but I can go and come back to it. Then I go join the regular quest again, and then I come back. So I love that. I love the choices. So, But I want to turn back to you, answer your own question. What's been your favorite thing that you've seen in the last few weeks? Probably the turn in Sea of Stars. They're playing Sea of Stars on Game Pass on Xbox. Mm. 8-bit, turn-based. I turned it on easy because I didn't have time to like grind to like learn anything. things. And I come back to it like every eight days, so I, I can't really like stay in on it. But it turned into spoilers. It's like this pirate magic fantasy, eight bit, sixteen bit, whatever pixel art, turn based role playing fantasy game, which is pretty fun with a cool story, great names like Captain Cliche, <laughs> right? Because she's got a pirate, she got a hook and a, you know, a patch. Full spoilers for Sea of Stars coming out. Turns out she's a cyborg from an alien planet. And it turns into this total steampunk. You're fighting mechs and stuff. I'm like, it's like my jam. Also, I think the thing, one thing we're both excited to see is Colorado Avalanche hockey. That was great. Last night's overtime shootout victory. Kale effing Makar. Dude, I was gripping for... 
Oh, so I, I had numbers. So it was 48 minutes. 48 minutes. No, no. <laughs> Wait, 40, is that right? No, it's 52 minutes of sheer anxiety because that was right around the time that they scored their goal. It was 229s going head to head because that's McKinnon right? and Blackwood. And yeah, Blackwood got them the point. It was the Avalanche versus Blackwood. And the San Jose Sharks were kind of on the side. Yeah. Lord. It was intense. It was pretty intense. It was good. But yeah, I'm glad about watching that. So that's That's about it. The car ride home. We just parked. So. Love y'all. All All the 37 of you. Well, you know, we'll see. Maybe we'll keep growing. But yeah, no, go. I would, I would go see this movie, obviously. Go. And then I'm, I'm totally going to go in uh, in the next couple days and go join the Wall Street Bets subreddit. If it's still there. Boom. Bye.